And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Art Deco. It is not spelled incorrectly. D-E-C-K-O is here because this is a deck building game, but it's... It's a deck building economic game. In this game, you are both buying and selling paintings and displaying them, trying to have the most valuable paintings at the end of the game. Uh, this is very similar in some regards to a classic game called Modern Art, where you also kind of speculated on which paintings would be the most popular. Here you can kind of control the popularity of paintings. So let me show you a bit about how the game plays, and we'll be back. There are five different types of paintings in this game. Uh, surrealism, Impressionism, Art Nouveau, Renaissance, and Pop Art, or as I say, green, blue, yellow, orange, and pink. But there's different types of paintings, and as the game progresses, players are gonna keep track of these paintings. They're gonna be going up and down in value. This does two things as they move up and down this track. At the end of the game, you're going to slide it over, and that's how many victory points they're going to be worth. Um, during the game itself, they're going to be able to be used as money. You can sell them for money purposes, and which is located here on the side. Players will keep track of this here, showing the value of each of the different types of paintings. Each player has their own board here, but the paintings, the value of the paintings, will be the same for all the different players. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get their own starting deck based on turn order. So if I was the first player, I would take the deck for the first player, which has several one monies and twos, three ones and twos, while you'll notice the fourth player gets one one and four twos. You also have some cards randomly drawn from the deck paintings. You'll see what color paintings you have. You'll mix them together and you'll draw five cards. On your turn, you have two actions that you can take. One of the actions is pretty simple. Spend a card to stick it up here in action one or action two, depending on whether it's your first or second action, to draw two other cards. You can also acquire a card or show a card. When you're acquiring and showing a card, if you have a money card, you'll use it for the money amount on it. If it's a painting card, you'll use it for the value of that painting. Money cards also have a special ability. This is buy one painting, so this is normally two money, but it's four if I'm buying a painting. However, if I use it for this ability, then it comes out of my deck. When buying paintings, or you could even buy more money cards, you can buy five money cards, three money cards, which can be valuable in different ways. Whenever you buy a painting or money card, the cost is up here. So five money cards cost eight, three money cards cost five. These paintings cost one, two, four, and seven. You buy the top painting, and it's gonna be put into your deck, so you'll now have another one of that type of painting. When you buy paintings, the value of them is gonna go up depending on which of these columns you buy them from. If you buy multiple paintings in your turn as both of your actions, you have to buy them from different galleries. At the end of your turn, you will check, and if any of these are completely empty, you'll then draw and refill them. However, the price also changes. This number would come off, and the next lowest number that's higher than the number here, so this was a two, so three would slide in here. Uh, if it was the seven, this would come off, and the next highest number would be eight. So the prices of paintings are gonna go up over the course of the game. Exhibiting paintings is the third action you can do, and this is where you will pay money to exhibit a painting. The amounts here are quite a bit more expensive, and you have to have the painting in your hand, but you'll play the painting there if it matches one of the icons that's here, and there's a wild icon. If so, you'll take that icon or the wild icon off, and you're gonna get that many victory points. You'll put one of your tokens there to show that you've done a painting of that type. The first person the first time anybody does a painting, they get a bonus, so you can either take a discount in the cost or get extra victory points. And you, if all the paintings in a section are done, then this random bonus tile that was put at the top will give points at the end of the game. The player with the most starting gold cards left at the end of the game will get an extra five points. But that only happens if they're all full, or if none of them are full at the end of the game, then whichever one has the most cards. Now. 
speaking of end of the game, when there's a certain number of cards here, 12 cards, that's going to trigger the end of the game. Or if the deck of painting cards runs out. Or if one of the tokens gets to the end here. By the way, gold also has a token that moves every time someone buys a gold card. At the end of the game, when that's triggered, these all slide over. Like I said, you'll count up all the cards in your deck, get points for their value. Your money is also worth points, although you'll notice that it's your best range is from 50 to 59. After that, money is worth one point for every three gold that you have. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, whether I like the game or not, I will say I'm not a huge fan of the graphic design. It feels very sparse, which is kind of weird for an art game. The boards are okay. You can flip the board over and you just put all your cards. I do like this. You put the cards near the amount that they score. And then there's a multiplication chart in case you can't figure that stuff out. So that's kind of cool. The art on the cards is great. And I like that the different styles, you know, surrealism is a different style. What I'm not as big of a fan of is that there's only a few different pictures. And in a game that's about art and celebrating art, I would have preferred that they show every card be a different picture because you're displaying art. And so thematically, it's weird to display this painting here and then to display another one that's the same. Now, they got artists, different artists to do the different types. But even though I'm not a huge fan of using public domain art, I might have in this case just so that every card would have been different. And there's a bunch of little tokens here. Lots of little ribbons and tokens for the different players. So it's not bad components. It's just, it should, it should look sharper on the table. Art Deco is a game that's going to appeal to many people. It appeals to me. I enjoy it. But I think it's one of those games you're going to have to play twice because the first game you're kind of sussing out how the game even works. People go into games with different perceptions. And so you might go into this game like, ooh, an economic game. And then the deck building part of it might throw you off a bit. If you are a deck building fanatic, like I am, I love deck building games where you build your own deck of cards and use them over the course of the game. And that's what this one does. Then that's great. But this economic game in the background is a little funky. And knowing how to put cards in your deck and keep them in your deck is really going to change how that plays. I like this. I think that's a cool you know, combination. I'm a big economic guy, and I also like deck building. But I do know that some of the people I played with, while I didn't meet anyone who actively disliked the game, some people were a little thrown off on how it played. It just didn't gel for them. And that's because it's, well, different. I think it's interesting when you buy the cards, clear a column, the price in the cards goes up, and everyone's trying to push the paintings that they want. Like, I'm buying lots of blue paintings to make the blue go up, but it really doesn't work if I'm the only person doing it. You can buy as many of one color as you want, but you kind of almost want to make a pseudo agreement with somebody, or if you see people are driving up the cost of a certain painting, get those paintings in your deck for two reasons. One, they're, they're worth more money when you spend them, and two, they're worth more points at the end of the game. Displaying a painting is also a cool thing to do. That gets you a lot of points, but you need to make sure that those points you get are better than the points you might have for having more of these in your deck at the end of the game. And then these bonuses, which are not necessarily easy to read or even understand, this could make the difference and has made the difference in who won or lost. So displaying in the right spot and then trying to get those points. Like this one here says, all pop art painting cards in the museum are plus three. And if I displayed three pop art museums, that's nine points, not a small amount of points. There's also three different ways that the game can end. So you got to kind of watch those game end triggers. This, there's luck involved in which paintings come out and how you draw in your deck, but not a tremendous amount of luck. And that coupled with this makes us feel like a different kind of stock market game. And I know some people actually buy and sell paintings and that's how they invest. I, I don't have the cash for that sort of thing, um, but I find it interesting. And if you like that, you might find this interesting too. This felt like a stock market game in some ways, but a little bit different because you don't go around displaying stocks in galleries. 
So if this sounds interesting to you, as it does to me, definitely check it out. So that's Art Deco. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thank <laughs> you.